Hello guys. Well, it's the Christmas holiday still, or at least it is while I'm recording this video. So I thought I'd crack on and have a look at this Avro Manchester conversion kit by Blackbird Models and try and figure out how I'm going to convert the Airfix Lancaster into a Manchester. And to help me with that, I'll be using this Wing Leader Photo Archive number 23, the Avro Manchester in RAF service. Now, I'll warn you now, there's not going to be a lot of modelling in this video, there is going to be a lot of talking, but I'm going to go through this book and look at some of the key features of the different versions of a Manchester and see how we can recreate them. This Blackbird's model kit is designed for the Airfix Lancaster Mark 1 3. I'm going to attempt to do it with the Mark 2 here, which I believe should be okay. The only difference with the Mark II is in the engines and they're replaced anyway, the nacelles are replaced anyway for the Manchester. So we should be okay on that one. The very simple reason I'm using the Mark II rather than the 1 or 3 and that's because this kit was 20 quid and I could only find the Mark I 3 kit for about 35 quid. And I do like to be optimal with my money. And in fact the money I saved there effectively paid for most of this wing leader reference book. So let's have a look inside. I really do like these books, they're absolutely incredible. I've got the one for the Lancaster specials as well. I did a review a while ago. Um, really, really good books and you'll find it packed with photos that you've never seen before. It's absolutely fantastic. As you might expect, we go through the uh, various Manchester versions in chronological order, starting here with the first prototype. So this is Avro type 679, and this is prototype L7246, and this particular photo shows the early version of that prototype. It's got a few things which might not be obvious from the photo, so the text tells us here that we have 80 foot 2 inch wingspan, and we have a 28 foot tail plane. As we'll see in this video, those dimensions do change uh, throughout the Manchester's life. We'll also notice that one of the characteristic features of the Manchester, the third tail fin, is absent on this prototype. And of course we've got no top turret and we've got no rear turret either on this prototype. So the arrow here pointing to the end of the wing shows that that uh, formation light is directly next to the uh, edge of the control surface there. And that's an indication that this is the shorter 80 foot wing. As you can see on the inset photo there, there's a gap between the edge of the control surface and the light, and that's for the longer wing, the 90 foot wing, which was um, introduced later on. So it's just small details like that which I never knew about, but which these wing leader books are great at highlighting. Another key feature here of the Manchesters, the early ones in particular, is the shorter vertical fins, these shorter tail fins. It doesn't always look the case, like in this photo here, but they are much shorter than the Lancasters. And finally, remember there that we've got that shorter 28 foot tail fin, tail plane. Now in terms of the Blackbird conversion kit, there's a couple of implications of that. Uh, these are the wings supplied in the kit, and if I can get the camera to focus, you'll see we've got a gap there between the edge of the control surface and the light unlike in the photo. So we won't be able to build the very earliest prototype using the uh, Blackbird kit straight out of the box. That's not a complaint, it's just something to bear in mind. What we do get though is that distinctive third thin, which we'll show you in, a book, in the book in a minute, plus the shorter tail fins. And we can compare those to the Airfix kit parts here, you can see just how much smaller they are. And then finally you can see here that we also have these shorter tail planes. If I put those behind the kit parts you can see the difference there. So that was the earliest version of the first Manchester prototype. The only thing stopping us building that straight away is those um, shorter wings. As we move on through the book, we come to the second prototype. And you can see here in this image, it's now got a third tail fin, but it has a very distinctive shape and it's not the shape that we might be used to seeing on a Manchester. 
very different to that final production version. And on this second prototype, we've now got the rear turret, but we don't have the top turret yet. Also of interest here is that we have a retractable ventral turret, which is quite interesting. It wasn't a particularly successful um, creation by all accounts, but uh, interesting to note anyway. And here we can see a later version of that second prototype, and by now we can see that it's got the production type third thin. One thing I really like about these wing leader books is their um, colour profiles. Here we have one for the second prototype, summer 1940, and in particular I like the modelling notes here, the modellers notes here. So here we have the 80 foot 2 inch wings, so that's the shorter wings with the 28 foot tailplane, so the shorter tailplane, and the final third fin. So again, the uh, lack of the shorter wing in the Blackbird kit would prevent us making this prototype. Next up we have the production aircraft, starting with the Mark 1, and all of these production aircraft have the 90 foot 1 inch wings, so the, the longer versions of the wings, which we can recreate with this kit. We've got the third tail fin, but we've got no top turret yet. There's a really interesting note here in this picture saying that Avro decided on the um, B pattern camouflage scheme for all Manchesters. Essentially the A and B patterns are mirror images of the same pattern, but they're just used to avoid having every aircraft looking identical from the air and therefore producing a pattern that sort of stands out to the human eye. And again, here's a colour profile for one of those Mark 1s. And you'll see, although we've got the larger wings, we've still got the shorter 28-foot tailplane. So at some point during this Mark 1 production run, those tailplanes are extended from 28 feet to 33 feet. So you might have a Mark 1 that's got the shorter or the longer tailplane. Here we have some images of some production Manchesters. You'll notice we've got the mid to low demarcation line there between the black and the camouflage pattern. And then as we move through the book, we start to see we've got some Manchesters with the top turret in place. So this is sometime during the Mark I production run. And we can see here on this second Mark I colour profile, that's exactly what we've got. We've got the top turret, we've got the larger wings, which our production aircraft had, but we've also got the larger tailplane here as well. So I'm wondering if maybe the top turret and the larger tailplane uh, correspond with each other. A couple of other things here for me to note while I'm building this. Um, we tend to have the grey squadron codes on the Manchester rather than the red ones, certainly on the earlier versions. Often the serial numbers are in red even if the squadron codes are in grey, although in this particular example that's not the case. And you'll also notice in the various photos throughout this book that the roundel style changes quite often. One thing I noticed here on this image it says that the uh, item labelled uh, D is the canopy blisters and it says that when these were fitted, they were always fitted to both sides of the cockpit. I thought that was always the case anyway, but maybe that implies that on some Lancasters that wasn't the case, I'm not sure. But again, worth remembering if I'm going to do cockpit blisters. Here's a great shot of a Manchester, and you can also see here the move from that mid demarcation line to the wavy high demarcation line. Such great photos in this book, I really recommend these books. Next up we have a section about the interiors, and probably the most obvious thing here is we've got a second control column. You do sometimes see that on Lancasters, but that is a post-war modification for a Lancaster. However, it's not a post-war modification for a Manchester, they did have the two control columns there. Given that the cockpit is quite visible on a Manchester, I can see myself having to recreate that somehow, perhaps a 3D printed copy, or maybe one stolen from another kit somehow, and then I'll 
work out how I'll make one of these the kit later. We also have details of the radio operator's position. In the main image here you can see that we've got a uh, wireless set which is very different to the Lancaster, very different setup. But on the lower image, on the smaller image, we've got a setup which is much more similar to the Lancaster with the same equipment it used. And that one is not as important to me because it's much harder to see into the wireless operator's position than it is the cockpit. And then finally we move on to the Mark 1A. A couple of big changes here for the 1As. All of them have got that longer, wider tail pane of 33 feet. They're missing the third tail fin and they've got the much taller tail fins here as used on the Lancaster. It's a really nice looking aircraft actually. And I could see how maybe a layperson could almost mistake this for a Lancaster. It looks very similar, of course, except for the, um, the two engines versus the four. I think for that reason, I'm unlikely to do a Mark 1A. I think I need to really build uh, mine with the distinctive tail fin and probably with the shorter tail planes as well. Since we've got the resin for those, it makes sense to use them. We've got a lovely piece of colour photography here at, towards the end of the book. You can see there the grey squadron codes and the red serial numbers and then a colour profile for said aircraft. The last page of the book on the inside cover shows us the various Avro Manchester unit codes and we have an example of that B upper surface camouflage scheme there which we can follow. I did make this small table here to try and summarise in my mind the differences between the various versions of the Manchester. Of course this is not complete or perfect, it's a generalisation and there are lots of other differences as well um, to do with roundel styles, lots of aerial positioning, things like this. Um, but this is just a, an overview for myself. So we've got the prototype with the very short wings, initially with no third fin and then later with one. No turrets on the prototypes, of course, and they've all got the short tail fins. We can't build either of those prototypes in the Blackbird kit because the wings on the prototypes were shorter, as I mentioned. As we move on to the Mark 1, we've got the longer wings on everything from now on. The early Mark 1s having the 28 foot tail planes and the later ones having the 33 foot ones. All Mark 1s having the third fin, all Mark 1s having the short tail fins, the early ones not having a top turret but the later ones having one. And again in general as we move through that Mark 1 production going from the low or the mid straight demarcation for the camouflage to the high wavy demarcation in general. And then finally as we move into the Mark 1A We've kept the wider tail plane that we had in the later Mark 1s. We've lost the third fin and we've got the taller Lancaster style tail fins. With the pieces in the Blackbird kit I could build any of the Mark 1s or 1As. I'm tempted to go for one of the earlier Mark 1s because I quite like the 28 foot tail plane but I quite like a top turret as well so I need to do a bit more research. I think there is a bit of overlap there between the two. A bit like the Lancaster was really when sort of new modifications came out, sometimes um, existing aircraft were updated and sometimes they weren't. So I'm quite tempted to go for an earlier Mark 1, but see if we've got one that might have a, uh, a top turret in it. Or indeed a later Mark 1, but with the shorter tail planes. I'm going to avoid the Mark 1A simply because it's a bit too similar to a Lancaster. Anyway guys, that was me talking for quite a while and not doing much modelling. I am now going to go away and start cutting this Airfix kit in pieces. And in my next Manchester video there will be a lot more modelling, I promise. Despite the talking, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoy making videos for you guys and I really enjoy reading your feedback in the comments below. So please don't be shy with those. I'd like to say thank you to all of you for watching. 
Extra special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members who give ongoing support. It's been greatly appreciated guys and it continues to make a huge difference to the channel. So thank you very much. And until next time, thank you again for watching and have fun modelling.